Good evening. Welcome to Getting Started with Canvas for Teachers. This is Pam Batchelor, and I'm from DTL um, at DPI, the Digital Teaching and Learning Team. And with me tonight, we have several um, special uh, hosts, guest hosts with us. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, so Cynthia, if you want to start us off. Sure. I'm Cynthia Sartain. I'm the North Central uh, Regional Consultant. And I'm Kathy Parker, and I am the Sand Hills Division of Digital Teaching and Learning Consultant. And this is Christy Barham from Canvas, so I'm excited to be with you all again tonight. Yes, we are very excited. Um, Kathy has just put in the chat that you can find our tonight's presentation um, either with that bit.ly link or if you go into the handout section of GoToWebinar, there is a PDF copy of the handout. Tonight's session is being recorded, and you will get a link to the recording um, in the email along with your CEU certificate. We're going to start with just a couple of questions to make sure you, everyone can see us and hear us appropriately. So if you would just start by taking a second to let us know if you can see the presenter screen. All right, and looks like everybody can see, and then let's see if everyone can hear. And again, it looks like most of us can hear, so that's wonderful, thank you. If at any point in time you have a question about tonight's uh, session or anything that Christy is going over, if you will use the questions feature in GoToWebinar to type in your question, that'll keep track of questions and responses for us. Um, and I think Christy's gonna put up a little bit of information about CEUs for us to go over for housekeeping. Um, so you will receive for your live participation in the webinar tonight a certificate for 0.1 CEU. Uh, please give me about five business days those, to send out those certificates. Um, they will be sent to you in an email with a link to the recording and a copy of the PDF of the presentation. Um, that will be sent to the email address that you registered with that you are attending with tonight. Uh, so be on the lookout for those emails. We do recommend digital learning credit competency credit for the certificates. However, the final decision on credit type is up to your local public school unit. So please make sure you're following your local process, um, including any great artifacts or um, things that you know you are doing in your Canvas course as a result of attending these webinars to help you get that digital learning competency credit. And again, just give me uh, some grace with uh, getting those emails out to you within five days. All right. Christy? Yeah. Oh, one more question. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot my question about asking if you have the paid version of Canvas. So we just kind of want to know for our purposes, does your public school unit have access to the paid version of Canvas? which is usually a red icon, um, except for Wake County. So if you're in Wake County, you have Canvas, you have the paid version, um, but your icon is a different color. But if you're on NC Ed Cloud and the IEM dashboard, if you have a red Canvas icon, then that answer would be yes. So we'll give folks about five more seconds to respond to this poll. All right, and we'll share the results. So uh, similar to earlier today, uh, most folks do have the paid version and uh, a few are unsure and then a few say no. Okay, thank you. That's always great to know um, who's on the call with us. So there are some things that will be different if you have a paid version or if you're on our free for teacher account. So um, some, like we do like to kind of have an idea of that. So thank you for those responses. Um, we, here are um, some resources for you for future webinars. I'm sure that you have somehow accessed these in order to get you here tonight. But um, just as a reminder, here is a list of all of the webinars with the registration links, dates and times, and the um, session descriptions, as well as um, this is where we post recordings, um, in, in addition to the fact that you get an email follow-up with the recording. Um, but this is also where we post recordings. So, 
definitely hope that you will continue to join us as we move throughout the year and the rest of this Getting Started series. Um, do notice that in November, we're going to talk about using uh, Canvas for assignments and speak greater. We'll look at how to create assignments, um, you know, for online submission, for paper, not, not graded, group discussion, or excuse me, group assignments, peer reviewed assignments. We'll also look at creating rubrics to attach um, to those assignments and how you can utilize SpeedGrader to really, um, and, uh, you know, efficiently and speedily um, grade uh, student work. So looking forward to that session is um, very much so. We also have a printable calendar that you can print and, you know, put on your filing cabinet or on your desk or somewhere. So just a really easy, quick reminder of all of the sessions that are coming up as well. So hopefully, uh, again, we'd like to see you in November to talk about assignments in SpeedGrader. But today we're going to be talking about pages. Uh, we're going to talk about how we use pages to share content and resources. We're going to view some example pages, talk about how Canvas can be, our Canvas pages can be used to support the universal design for learning principles. Um, and then add a page, uh, just kind of walk through some of the different features that you can utilize when you're creating pages and also hopefully leave some time for some Q&A at the end. Um, although, as Pam mentioned, all throughout the session, if you have questions, please do post those and then um, I'll stop periodically um, to answer any questions that come in. So one of the benefits of pages is that it just they just really open up a world of opportunity for you. So, you know, we say, what can you do with them? Well, the sky's the limit. I mean, it really lets you be creative um, in this. In, essence in all basic form a page is basically the same as a word document a google document um, so you can do you know just standard text you can type on it right so that's just in a very basic form but you also can add all kinds of other resources so um, you can add links and videos and images and files and you know you can have other content pages from canvas embedded in them and or linked in there. You can, a page can be a class wiki. So if any of you ever used wiki spaces where students collaborated to build some type of resource or page, that can be, um, Canvas pages can be utilized for that functionality as well. But they can be used as agendas. They can be used as notes for students, as resources for parents. Uh, one of my favorite uses of Canvas pages are for video notes where teachers go in and record little short snippets to help with homework or to help students as they review for tests so that they can go back and watch those videos. Um, if you have a upcoming you know, um, or excuse me, if you just had a test and posting the answer key or posting the responses or the answer key for last night's homework so students can self-check or self-grade, um, you know, their work. Some of those ways that you can use pages where it's something that is not graded. So even if you're embedding an interactive activity, so I'm going to show you some examples of uh, flashcard sets that you can embed in or like um, curriculum pathway assignments that you can embed um, into, or excuse me, that's actually in an assignment, but other um, uh, LTI tools and external tools that you can embed into your Canvas page or videos that require students to respond in a question that you can embed in your Canvas pages. All of those things that you can do that allow students to interact, but that not aren't necessarily graded. Um, as I go around and look at different Canvas courses, I see a lot of courses that are just full of either assignments, quizzes, or files, um, and not a lot, not as many pages. And so I just really want to advocate for that. Here are some example pages. Um, these aren't the, like the necessarily absolute 100% best pages. They're just pages I've seen um, throughout the years as I've um, looked at different Canvas courses, and I wanted to highlight some of the some of them because of the different ways that teachers are using pages. So this one is um, actually a page that a teacher designed as a home page for her course, and she just used a, bu a button sheet that looks like the button factory. I know that sounds funny, but it is actually literally how it's spelled, the button factory. <laughs> looks like she used the button factory to create um, these, excuse me, let me get that to here, to create these buttons. And then each button would take you to the module um, for that particular unit for the course. So even though the course was designed in modules so that students had a really easy 
um, way to navigate and it was really well organized and all the content for each unit was grouped where they could find it easily. Um, but she used this homepage with these buttons to jump to each of those specific modules for students so that it was really easy for them to get to where they needed to go um, throughout the course of the semester or year. So this is a really good example of a page. Um, and, and I say, um, as, I'm, as I go through and show you some of these, th some of these are, you know, pretty high skill level. Um, I, you know, I don't think it really takes a lot of skill to be able to go to the button factory, create a button and put it here. But some of the ones I'll show you are, um, you know, more high level examples and some of them require you to just have a, a knowledge of some, um, you know, HTML or to just have knowledge of working with tables. And it's okay if you don't have that. You don't have to have your pages, especially out of the gate, looking like this, just trying to show you possibilities. Um, and But really the intent of this is not about the design or the look, even though it can be really engaging for students when we have a well-designed, a real pretty course. But it's really about the content, the types of things. So again, that teacher used a page where she just had a really easy way for students to navigate to different sections of the course. Here's a page where it's it's very similar, just different. It was um, created as a table of contents, not a home page, but a table of contents that, again, allowed um, students to find where they needed to be within the course. This is a page um, where this teacher has used a weekly um, page or page for each week where she has daily homework listed. Um, so this is a really nice way to just get make sure students know exactly what's expected of them. Um, really easy, you know, per week to go in and say this is these are going to be your homework assignments throughout the week. Um, especially nice for students who when they are having um, troubles, you know, or not trouble, but all of our students are participating in lots of activities. Um, after school as well, they may be working, they may you know, have other responsibilities, and to let them see that week is at a time where they know how to schedule out the, what, the work that needs to be done and what's expected of them, I mean, it's a really great benefit and a resource for them. So I love seeing Canvas used as an agenda or a home, or excuse me, a homework help there. Um, similarly, this is um, a teacher who each week says this not only in homework, but like these are the things that we're doing. Like these are this is what we're doing in class each week. So not only does she have links out to things that will be completed online, but um, actually has things that are going to be done that are in the textbook. They, so just so that students have a really good idea of what um, that, that day is going to look like each day. She also included some videos. Right, so she wanted to make sure that as they were, um, you know, talking about something, then they had um, a, a video so that they had a good idea of what that um, looked like as they were getting ready to complete those labs. Links out to other pages and then that weekend homework. So really great way to utilize that page there. This is an example um, of this is just a table with a link and on one side of the table or in one column and an image that corresponds in the other. So, so you think if you had a resource page in your course where you could say, you know, here are some resources and I'm just going to give you the links. And this is just a really easy way to design that. But seriously, having a resource page for your course, if you say, um, you know, to be successful in this course, um, when you want to have extra practice or um, you need some additional information, here are some resources for you. So if I'm thinking about, you know, math, you know, it might be that you would have Khan Academy here. I taught Spanish and I know I had a resources page where I had um, multiple sites called Juguemos, uh, Study Spanish, um, Realidades, um, just lots of different pages where um, or got lots of different resources where my students could go to get extra practice or to get extra explanations on some really good videos. So thinking about using Canvas as a uh, Canvas page, excuse me, as a resource page is another great way to use it. Now this is a, a real high level. You have to know some HTML to get these tabbed. Uh, this tabbed look, but I, I did want to point out that again, once you you know kind of play around with pages and you understand how they work, there are some really cool things that you can do um, to make them look um, a little bit more engaging. And this is one example here. 
just another way that this teacher has used a page per day per lesson. So we saw some examples where teachers had pages for the week where it just kind of really was more task driven or homework driven. But here, this is all of the day's activities. So we've got the video for students on um, quadrilaterals, then some an, a, a directions for brainstorming with a partner. Um, then there are some like you could see here, she linked out to a Linoit or Linoit, depending on how you say it, for students, which actually could have been, been embedded there as well. Um, here, this this is actually a Word doc, so she, you know, she they've got an, a file that was embedded there. So I'm showing you all like different kinds of things that this teacher has um, put on this page. So. It didn't open for me. I'm going to leave it alone right now because uh, I just didn't have Word open. But then we have, um, you know, oh, excuse me, another interactive website that the teachers linked out as an example for something that students could do to help practice all of those properties of the parallelograms, um, the flip chart, and then also another video, so an additional resource. So just think about all of the ways that the students were able to engage with this content. So there was a video, there was partner activity, group activity with those questions there as, uh, to jumpstart that discussion. There was the line of it, so just like a real interactive activity, not graded, but something students could do just to jot down those, those ideas, um, having, you know, the actual document that would have been um, more of a standard type worksheet type thing that we would do, an interactive website, and again, then those additional resources to review, both in a text format and a video format. So lots of good examples there. I'll show you just a couple more examples. Um, and again, here we have video, lots of different links to to, to videos, to discussions. So I said that it can link out and I'm not logged in here. So that's why you're not gonna see it, but you can leave them linked out to other Canvas pages. And here that's an example. There's a discussion within this course. And so um, it links directly to that discussion in the course. So you can link to lots of places. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of, um, like I have a, um, Here is a practice activity sort of where you, you see you've got these um, videos linked in here, right? And I also have linked out to the textbook. So you've got the text-based resource as well as the video resources there. So you see a couple of different things. Here you've got a Quizlet activity, and so students, you can see. They ¿Cómo se llama ella? What does she call herself? And this is actually, I designed this as an assignment, but you could do, embed this in a page as well. And so you see that you've got those flashcards, um, which we just saw. The student can have the spell. Um, Hasta activity. pronto. Right. Estoy mal. Sorry, so all the different ways that they can um, engage with that activity. So you can have that embedded right within that page. It's really nice. Um, and then also just having, um, I wanted to show you a couple examples of, excuse me, I want to get a modules here. Like for this particular module, having it really well designed where students get an overview of what's happening in the lesson. And they've got the learning objectives having you know a video to engage this video coming up actually has questions i don't know if you can see the little dots each are along here for each of these little dots and i won't go all the way through it um, especially because it's my voice <laughs> that i don't like um, but each one of those dots represents a question so the video pauses and i used the there you go you can see a little better there i used a resource let's see um, called h5p to create this um, and so and you have to go all the way through it to get to the question. But I used a, actually I used a couple different tools to create this. I used my simple show to create the actual video. Then I put the video into H5P where H5P allowed me to create um, these questions to embed along the way through the video. Now, again, these are not things that are graded. 
Um, this is just, you know, for the students to self-check, you know, for them to really think about, am I really getting this? Now, there are other tools, like Canvas has a tool that teachers can see. Now, you see my first, um, you see my, my first question there. Um, but Canvas has a tool that is actually, you know, a paid tool that had this video. You can embed questions. You can have timestamp comments. You can even see if students have watched the video and if not, if they've skipped forward, if they only watched a few seconds of it. But this is a free tool. Um, there's also a free tool called Edpuzzle, um, which people see. So here we have, um, we have another question here, so we see if you know they got it right. So that's one example. That's, or excuse me, that's another example of a way you can use a page. Um, here's another one with the tables. Here's another interactive activity where you're trying to put passwords in order from left to right. Which ones are better? I'm going to get it wrong just to show you. Yeah, so I got that wrong. Then I can retry. So again, it allows you to embed some interactive activities there for students. So hopefully that's helpful to give you a good idea of the types of ways that you or the ways that you can use Canvas. Um, before we specifically talk about it for Universal Design for Learning, I'm going to pause. And Pam, are there any questions? On our last Where do we get so far? Thank you. There are not any right now. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. So when we think about universal design for learning. We know that we want to make sure that students have multiple means of engagement, multiple means of representation, multiple means of action and expression. Right. So within the course, we think about I want to really focus on how Canvas and Canvas pages specifically support that, um, especially the first two. Multiple means of action expression. Certainly, you know, with Canvas pages, we've talked about, you know, having students do self checks, kind of more formative assessment. But definitely when we get into assignments next week, we can talk more about the multiple means of action and expression and giving students different ways to demonstrate mastery. Um, of contents. But when you think about multiple means of engagement, having students have the opportunity to do things um, that are, you know, um, more individualized versus more group activities, like you saw that there were some reading activities, there were some things that were some, you know, sh think pair share type activities. The descriptions in Canvas helps support giving students all of those directions as well as having all the resources available for them to have all those different types of engagement. Certainly multiple means of representation. So we've, we've seen video, we've seen um, those interactive activities, we've seen text-based resources. Um, so very often I see infographics or charts for things that, you know, for students who are highly visual, um, you know that those things are gonna help, help them just in digest and ingest um, and to really get a good idea and grasp of the concepts and skills that you're trying to to help them master. So really thinking about how Canvas pages can be used to not only, not just a static textbook, you know, not just that flat text on a page, but instead you can have text-based text -based resources, but then you also have all those other interactive elements and, and media elements that really help to engage more students. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of students prefer to interact with content that way. Now, personally, I'm a, I'm a text girl. Uh, you give me the a choice between, you know, watching a video and reading a long article, I'm going to read the long article. But there are, you know, that's not for all of our students. And um, so, you know, there are other, there are students who prefer those video resources. And so being able to have them all available, all of the different types of formats that students might want to choose to engage with them and in, in, in alternate, giving them, you know, all of those different um, resources too. not just say that even if it's not choice, but giving them different types of resources that they're engaging with so that you make sure that they have the best opportunity to master that content. So really want to think about as we move forward talking about pages that we're just keeping that in mind that we want to make sure that the, the main goal is that we're going to have all of those different ways for our students to engage with the content, all of the different ways for them, you know, to have the material represented for them. So the basic building block of any Canvas page is the rich content editor. Um, you'll sometimes see it referred to as the RCE, 
a rich content editor. And in any Canvas page, um, you're going to find, or actually you're really anywhere in Canvas, you're going to find a rich content editor anywhere you get a box to type in. Um, you also have it in Word, you have it in Google Docs, so, and you'll know what I'm talking about as soon as I get to one. So I'm in my Canvas sandbox, and I'm going to just go in and start a new course for us to look in today. Um, if you have the opportunity to um, create a, you know, a, an environment to play in a sandbox, or if you have a sandbox, um, that's great. If you need to play in a real course, um, just feel comfortable in knowing that unless you publish something, no one can see it, or no, no students are seeing it. I shouldn't say no one, because if it's someone with admin level access in your district or school, they can see it. But I don't want you to fear that I'm, you know, you're going to create a page and, and students and parents are already going to see that. Just know that until you publish things, and that means you can publish the course, you have to publish individual, you know, if it's in a module, you have to publish a module, you have to publish the actual individual page. So you have a lot of protection there and freedom to play. Um, but I'm going to just real quickly start creating a page um, and really that was, you know, the next thing that we're going to do. Um, before I jump there, I just want to show you. I have to get to start creating a page to show you the rich content editor. Um, so we'll talk about the rich content editor as I start creating the page. But I do want you to know that I've linked a guide here for you that will show you with the rich content editor, which is that's what this is, that you have all of these different tools that you can use. And this kind of describes it. Also tells you about some keyboard um, shortcuts that you can get to. Um, as we get into creating our page, you'll I have the guides here for you, or the excuse me, the guide for how to create a new page in Canvas. So it gives you step-by-step -step directions. Um, but also I have a link to all of the pages guides. And if you're not familiar with the Canvas guides, I do want to show you that in any course that you're in, you can go to the help menu and search the Canvas guides. Um, you have you may have five items here, six items here. But one of them should be, you know, search the Canvas guides. And so you can always go into those Canvas guides and you are instructors. Um, and you can find out how you want to do anything and everything with really detailed directions. Um, so this is a really good resource for you. But I linked the one specifically for pages to our presentation so you have easy access to them. I know that as I go in and start creating a page, um, not everyone is going to be able to do that along with me right now because you're trying to watch the webinar. So if you don't have two screens, I recognize that it's really hard to try to build and follow along while I'm doing this and talking. The beauty of having the video is of the recording later is that you can pause, rewind, and do it at the same time as you're listening to that recording. So I do hope you take advantage of that if you're needing a little bit of step-by-step -step guidance and building a page. Um, and, that, and I say the same thing for students. Again, if we're utilizing this Canvas resource and utilizing these pages to post these recordings for students so that they can also watch you, you know, um, diagram a sentence or watch you um, work through um, a, a particular problem, you know, a, a way that uh, um, how they would um, solve a particular type of problem. If they have the ability to also rewatch Right, because we don't always get it the first time. So if they have the ability to rewatch, pause, rewind, um, and practice at the same time, then it's very beneficial to them. So hopefully it will be beneficial to you as well. Um, I'm going to start out by putting a module in my course. And those of you who were with me previously know that I really like modules. Um, and so I am going to um, just put week one. Um, as my module header or my module title. Now a module page, this whole page, we're going to think of like a, um, a, a notebook, like a binder. But in each individual module itself is like a tab in your binder. So I'm real quickly just going to add a couple modules so that you can see we start building those tabs, right? So, but within my week one module, I might want to, let me go back to that. So I had the plus up here with the modules, but here I have a plus to add an item. 
When I go to add that item, I get a drop down box and I can add multiple different types of things. And I, I see a lot of courses that just have assignments, even when I know that teachers didn't want everything in there to be graded, they didn't want everything in there to be in their grade book. But I know that that happens because that's the first thing, the default, and I think people just forget they can drop this down and choose all these different types of things. But we're going to choose a page and we're going to click on new page that gives us an option to name it. And I'm going to say week one agenda. Okay, so we're going to name that week one agenda and I'm going to add that item. Now that just adds a placeholder basically within my module. So I need to open that up to edit it. But do notice again, in addition to the fact that this course isn't published, because this would be green, but this module is not published and this item is not published. So again, even if I had students, if this were my power school created courses and I had students in it, then they would not be able to see that. So I publish, publish everything. So I'm gonna open it up. And we're going to edit. So we talked about the rich content editor real quickly, like, right, that said that this is what that is, right? We're going to talk about all of the different things, all those different pieces um, that live in the rich content editor. I really want to make sure you understand what each of these things are. So we're going to go through each of them and then start building our page. Now, again, I could just start typing, right? I could just start typing on this page. I don't have to do anything. Um, this could just be like a Word doc, a Google doc. It doesn't have to have be fancy. It doesn't have to have buttons. It doesn't have to have images or tables. You could just start typing. Okay, but you do, even if you start typing, you have all of these options up here. You can bold, um, italicize, underline, you can change color, you can change background color. Um, this clears formatting if you've applied a formatting. You can uh, change the alignment, increase um, indent. You can, of course, superscript, subscript. You've got a bulleted list, numbered list. Um, you can change the font size. I have a lot of people that think that 12 is just too small and they always want to change the font size. You could change the style if you needed a header. Um, you also, if you wanted to add in a table, can do that. If you want to insert media, you can insert media directly into your Canvas page. So in this instance, let's go find a YouTube video. We're going to find a YouTube video that we're going to put. LMS. Technically, it stands for Learning Management System. But okay. sorry about that loudness. So I'll put that video there. I could change the size if I wanted to. Um, and then I just put my video right directly in my page. Um, so LMS. Just know that Technically. That's an option for you there. And that was utilizing this insert media. Now, when I did that, I did it with the URL. If you know how to get the embed code from something, you can also do it that way. Um, I, ne I don't use the advanced tab myself. Those two are the only, I, only two I ever need to use. Um, you also can just link something. So if I wanted to say, this is a resource you need to review. And I had, let's say, content journals. And I have a, go in, just find an activity or find something I want students to review. So I'm going to grab that URL and then I'm going to go back to my page and I'm going to link that resource. So I'm just going to copy this link. I can link it. Right. So I've got that opportunity there as well. If I needed to unlink it, you actually can unlink it there. You can re remove that link. So that's something you can do. You also can add in images. So if you wanted to add in um, an image because you had a URL for that image, you could do it. So here's an example. Get 
that like and I can have alternate text so that if I have a screen reader student that is uh, visually impaired using a screen reader then I will read that to them I could change the aspect ratio um, but that's putting my image right there in there for me um, also with images, if I have an image, let's say that I wanted to, um, if I was making a like welcome to the course page and I wanted to say, here's, um, I'm going to add a picture of me for my students to get to know me, then I could go to Canvas course files, upload a file and I'm going to find that picture of me. I'm going to put that directly in there. Um, that so I can put an image in that way. I also can look for an image so I can embed, look for images so I can say I want an image of a horse. Um, I could add additional description if I needed to. I could change the size of it. Uh, and say that and add that horse in. So lots of different ways to add images in using this little tool. You have an equation editor. So I'm not a math teacher. I won't pretend uh, to be a math teacher, but I could go in and um, create my equation utilizing all of these different tools. Um, so I'm just going to do something super, super basic. I'm going to say two plus two equals four, right? And then I can insert my equation uh, directly into that page. I have, um, if there are, was content that I had favorited from Commons, um, Canvas Commons, which is where you can find lots of things that people have shared um, just freely, um, willingly, I could, if I had sh favorited some content, then I would find that there that I could bring over into my page. I'm not going to do anything there. Um, ARC is the video tool that I was telling you about. If you had ARC, then you would be able to take any of those videos that you created in with quizzes and let drop that into your Canvas course. I'm going to skip that one for a second and go to record upload media. I can even record and upload media directly um, from this page. So I can say, let's pretend like this was my welcome message and I'm giving you know, or a weekly overview for the students. So I'm saying this week, this is, these are the things that we're going to do. This is, um, my, these are my expectations. This is, um, if you need any help, this is a good place for you to go for help. Um, you know, contact me if you have any questions and these are my office hours this week. Um, or something to that effect. When I'm ready, I can say week one video and save that. And it would go into also that Canvas page. Um, so you see it there. And you may have noticed that I also had the option to upload media. So from here, instead of recording, I could have also up uploaded um, an audio or video file if I had one. Um, you can do left to right or right to left. Again, we talked about those. So another thing that I can do, sorry. I'm going to put this here. Another thing that I can do is go to more external tools and I can, any of the external tools that either, and, and you may not find anything here. Um, most people have some things, um, but most, if you ha don't find anything here, it's because your district or school has not added in any external tools for you to use in your courses. Now, sometimes you can add them yourself. Sometimes you're restricted. Um, so it just really depends on um, what those district or school settings are. But if you have external tools here, then any of the ones you have, then you can utilize to add in. So here, this is a Quizlet set. Let's say that I'm doing triangles. So I want to find the Quizlet set. I want to embed that there. And I've got it now, that Quizlet set directly in my page. Right, so all of these external tools are things that you can embed in your page. Even if you notice, I've got a Google Doc here. So I can go to Google Apps. And I can say, 
let's pretend that I have um, okay this was an activity we did this was the icebreaker the other day um, where it's kind of fun um, you have to rank it if you were on a deserted island what are the things that you would take with you and why so let's say that I wanted to embed that I could do that and then once I save it, you've got that embedded content. Now, obviously, this is a hodgepodge page where I've just been showing you how to do different things. Um, but just notice, like, these are the ways that each of those kind of look on the page once you've done that. Okay. What I didn't show you yet was anything on the right-hand side because people forget about these. Um, you also can link, if I, this is a brand new course, remember I started a new brand new course, but if I already had Canvas content built, then anywhere I put my cursor, like I could put it here, and I could just go to pages, drop down, and then I could link that page. Now that's gonna, that would create a kind of a circular reference because this is that page, but I could just, uh, do that there. I also, if I have my, I don't have to highlight the text, I can just say that and we'll drop that directly in there. Anything that I have built into the course. Um, I have different modules built already, so I could link it directly to a module. And that's a lot of the times when, um, just like the first page that I built for you, or the page example I showed you where the teacher had taken um, the buttons and she linked them to the different modules in the course, that's how she did that. I'm going to pause real quickly um, for questions. Christy, so far we're good. Great. Well, I was being a little selfish. If you can hear a little tickle, I'm a little tiny bit under the weather. So I had to pause to take a drink to, <laughs> to try to clear my throat. So. Um, in addition to the fact that you can link things here from within Canvas, you also can come over and you can find files. So if you have a file that you wanted to link in, you can upload that new file um, and put it directly in here. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that I might want to link in. Um, I don't know what the screenshot is, but we'll just put that screenshot right in there. So I've got that file there. Now files don't show up as, um, they, you don't view them right there on the page. So that's why you see just the file extension and students would be able to download that. Now, and that's an image that wasn't a good example for me because technically the way I would do images are normally like this and I would just, um, I would upload that image and I would actually have it be where you could view it there. Right. Okay. So again, this is just the way that you would build that page and have everything there for students. Now, that was a hodgepodge of a page. Um, if I were truly building a week one agenda and I'm just gonna, um, let's just remove this page from our module. Um, also, just as a fun fact, <laughs> when you remove something from the module, that does not really remove it from the course, it just removes it from the module. So I'm actually gonna delete that all together, go back home and start all over. So I'm gonna start a new agenda. I'm going to talk about what it might really look like. So let's go to a real page. All right, I'm going to say week one agenda. And I would actually put dates in here too if I were really doing this. I'm going to open up that agenda and go to edit. I might want some kind of little fun video or picture. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to do a video. Welcome to week one of our course. This week we're going to talk about how to use um, Spanish greetings. We're going to learn how to say the days of the week, the months of the year. We're going to learn um, our numbers from one to 100 and just all together have a great time learning and 
starting to feel comfortable utilizing a lot of vocabulary in Spanish. Sorry, y'all had to pause to cough a little bit. Um, that was not a very good video because I was rushing, but I'm gonna do, we'll just say week one video there again. Got that video in there for my students. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create a table. Like I like to use tables when I am laying out content. So I'm gonna have um, days one through five. I'm actually gonna center the content when I, I write it here. So I'm gonna have Monday. And again, I would have the days of the week. Or I would have the um, dates. I don't know if this is the right dates for this year, but we're going to pretend. So this is just a really easy way to start building an agenda page. Sorry, I didn't like the way that that spacing got in there, so I backed out of there. And Friday, August. Let's um, say that you decided that you wanted the font to be a little bigger. We can do that. Um, so over here, I'm going to do a numbered list. And I'm going to say, and I want to make that, I want to make that. Oops, not 18. I want to make it 14. Sorry. I'm going to make that. And we're going to say, oh, you know, these are the things that we're doing this week in course, I mean, or this week in class, um, vocabulary activity. Um, all right, so I have all of these things that we were doing each day. I'm going to put an extra space in there. And I'm just going to pretend like um, I'm going to copy and paste all of this in here just to give me some content throughout my table. But certainly uh, in a real class, we would just have the same agenda every day, I don't think. Maybe, possibly. Um, but I'm just going to put this, I'm going to um, drop it in here just to, for the sake of time and show you that within this table now that I have, I can also go to table properties and I'm going to take out the border. Um, I'm going to say that, let's get advanced. Um, I could change if I wanted to different aspects of the border. So if I wanted to have a border, I could have it be a, diff a different style. I could have a different border color, a different background color. For alignment, I could have it be left, center, or right. I'm just going to leave that right there. Okay. For this particular um, row, I could have um, row properties. And I could have it be, you know, alignment there, left, center, or right for just that row if I wanted to. Could have it be a header or footer. So you see all of the different things that you can do with your, um, with your, your, excuse me, your table properties. I could even go in here and let's just see if I can find you know, an image for Monday. I'm gonna get a flicker and look. Not everything, because Flickr is only gonna return Creative Commons licensed, Creative Commons licensed photos. So you're not gonna see everything that you may ever want. Um, it's only gonna be things that you have permission to use. But you can see I have a little box there that's Monday now. I could start jazzing that up just a tad. Um, I don't know if we'll get as lucky to find one that easily for Tuesday. But um, I just want to kind of show you some examples of, of things that you could do in those tables. <laughs> Ruby Tuesday, so that's it. So we'll, we'll use a Ruby Tuesday just for uh, an example here. I'm making those the same size. Okay. Although this was, um, it was 150 horizontally, but um, you know, obviously 50 vertically. But I could continue doing that for the rest of my table. When I'm ready, I can save it. And then of course, when I'm ready for anybody to see it, I can save and publish it. So just know that these are some things that you can do. Um, starts being ways that you can jazz up that content.
Let's go take this. I wanted to center it, but it's not letting me. Not letting me move it. Um, so I should have done that before I started. Um, I could always delete it and redo it, but I don't want to do that right this second. But I could, if I had started over in the alignment with this thing. Welcome to week one of our course. This week we're going to there talk we about how to Ooh. use, <laughs> we'll make that a little smaller now. So you start seeing how you can build that page. So I'm going to stop, pause, and again, just ask if there are any questions. So we don't have any right now, but we'll give it a second to see if any come in. Okay. All right, um, we've got Beverly just said this was good information. So thank you, Beverly. Yeah, thank you. And uh, <laughs> Jerry Lynn is saying uh, that she's sending you a virtual uh, throat lozenge. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate that. It was all right. Pam knows, like when I in between calls, I, I, I had because we did one of these at four o'clock, but I ate some honey, took another. You know, um, using it. It's a 12 hour cough suppressant. Um, uh, but as I talk for an hour solid, it <laughs> uh, doesn't uh, like me very much. Um, okay. So, one more thing. Um, Kim asked um, I don't know how to move things from my sandbox to the course for my students. Okay. So, there you have three options basically um, within your course. Once you've got it built, you can always go to settings and you can export that course content. It exports it into a um, file that you can download. It does take a while sometimes. So this is just one way, one of the three. I'm going to go ahead and sh while that's doing, I'm going to close some of these tabs because we have a lot of them open. Or I have a lot of them open, you all. Oh, we don't. That takes a couple of minutes anyway. It'll give me something. All right, so the content's exported, so I can click on it and it downloads. Um, once it downloads, then I've got that content available to add into another course. So let's say that I was, um, now I'm going to have to create one because I don't have those courses readily created for me. I'm like, you do, oops, where did my button go? So let, let's just pretend like this is my first period. Finish course then I could go into that course and go to settings import course content now I can go here and select and if I were importing from this export then I would go to canvas course export package then I would choose file downloads and then choose that export open then I could choose to import all content or I could do specific content if I wanted to, which it would let me choose what which items I wanted to import. If I needed to adjust events and due dates, I could do that and it would give me some additional questions asking me when the start of this first one was, the end of the first course was, when the start of this course, when's the end of this course, um, and then I hit import. That's all I would have to do for that process. Now I'm going to show you if I didn't want to do the export and import, I could also just in my student course, so this is your like PowerSchool Creative course, you could also go to, instead of Canvas ex course export package, go to copy a Canvas course, and then you could search for that course. Um, I call it page sandbox two, right? Same thing. I would choose all content or select specific content and then import. And the third way that you get content into your course is by going to 
or from one course to another is by putting your course in comments. So I can, uh, from my course settings page, I can um, share it to Commons. I can decide um, all of these things. Is it a previously shared resource? Who's it going to be available to? Is it just me? Is it everybody in my, my school district or school? Is it a select group of people, select consortium, public? I'm, I'm going to give it to anybody. Um, who do I want to share it with? But I can share it with whichever one I want to share it with, make all of these decisions. I'm not going to do this one because it's just junk and I don't want to junk up commons. But I can make all those decisions, even if I just want to share it with just myself. Um, and then hit share and it would be available for me to import from a course. So let me go into a course and I'll show you what that would look like. I'm sorry, I want to get a dashboard. just so that you get a good idea of what this course is going to look like. I'm going to, don't ever do this. Don't ever resort, reset course content for something that's real. This is just my sandbox so I can reset it so that it makes everything cleared out because um, I want to show you. So if I have a brand new course and I want to import a course that has been shared to Commons, so it could be one that I um, imported to Commons, or it could be, let's just say that I wanted to find something that is, um, I want to find a full course. Let's say I'm looking for a um, fourth grade course. So I'm looking over here. And that's anything that somebody who labeled as fourth grade. It doesn't necessarily, oops, mean that it is a fourth grade. It just means that something somebody, everybody, someone has labeled as fourth grade. Um, obviously, there's some things in here that aren't, but it starts giving you an opportunity to. Um, search for by different criteria. I'm just going to pretend this is the course I want. I've gone in. This is my civics and economics. I can look and see everything that's in the course and I'm going to import that course and I'm going to import it into pages sandbox and import into course. Um, so then it may take it a little while. May not be there yet. Yep. Okay, so this is not the course we were in. I forgot. I had to have it was the one sandbox too. Um, so the, I had, this is not the course I reset, which is why you see the stuff I built in here earlier today. But now you see all the stuff I imported from Commons just now. So that's especially helpful. Um, not to say that you ever want to plan to leave your school district or your school, but it's really helpful you to know that you can import things to Commons or um, share to Commons, and then you would have it no matter where you went. Now, if you were going to do that, then you would want to make sure that you didn't just share it to yourself because you will no longer be yourself if you're switching districts or switching schools. Um, I have had a lot of people ask me how to, how to preserve their content, and that's a good way. So that's a very long answer, but there are three ways. All right, Christy, I think that's all the questions for tonight. Okay. Well, we really appreciate everybody taking the time to be with us and um, do hope that these are helpful. Tell your friends, <laughs> get them to watch the recordings. And I do hope that, you know, if you have any questions that the recordings are helpful to you as well. Everyone have a great night. Yes, and thank you, Kathy and Cynthia, for joining us. Uh, and we hope you feel better, Christy. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 -bye.